Hi there. So in this video, I'm going to talk about something I get asked probably surprisingly often, which is about how to extract profiles from an elevation surface or indeed any other raster surface layer particularly if you've got multiple profiles and potentially multiple data sets that you want to use to look at change over time. So there's a couple of answers to this um, and my, my preferred answer isn't necessarily the simplest one. I'll explain a bit more about why as I go along. So probably the quickest and easiest way to do this is actually using ArcGIS Pro's built-in profile graph tools. So if we've got an elevation layer, so in my map here, I've got three LiDAR elevation layers, 2009, 2014, 2020. And we can simply right click on one of these, uh, go to create chart and go to the surface profile option. So when this initially opens, you'll notice there's nothing in there. That's because we need to tell it where the profile is. And we do have a few options at this point. So if we're just exploring, and this is where actually the, the built-in profile chart tool does come into its own, we can use the line option here and draw a profile on our map. It doesn't have to be a single segment. We can kind of draw multiple lines. Uh, whenever we get to the end, just double click to finish the same as we would if we were digitizing. And voila, it's created a profile graph um, for that data set. And if we want to do that for more than one data set at once, then actually we can. So if we look over here by default, it's set to single layer. If we choose the multiple layer option, then we can simply drop down, add in our data from other years. Now, one annoying thing about the, the interactive lines is as you'll see just now, if we make changes, it does clear the, the line that we've just drawn. Um, so now I've got those multiple layers selected. I can draw my line again. And lo and behold, we now have an elevation graph showing all three years. And I'm not going to go through all the, the display settings. You know, if you've used Excel or any other charting tool, then, you know, setting what you need for the kind of axes and formats. Um, you can set the colors, the line thicknesses, all the the usual things. Um, now, if we want to do a bit more than just interactive exploring and, you know, just to say now we've done that, if we want to look at a different area, we can add that in and that will actually be added in as a, a second line on here. Um, we can kind of select those and indeed turn the lines on and off um, or remove them if if we only want to look at one of those. Um, if we've got set profiles that we want to look at, then probably uh, an easier, better way to do this is actually rather than just drawing the line interactively, we can use the feature selector to add existing profile lines. And it doesn't seem to let us drag and add a box. Um, so we have to kind of click on the profile features we want individually but we can go along click on our profile lines and as before we can do that for multiple bands or just one band um, we can turn them on and off you know exactly the same as previously and we've already got our nice profile graph there ready to export so everything's great um, there's a couple of reasons that this isn't my favorite way of, of doing this. Uh, one is actually, I've discovered if you have your elevation data symbolized as a shaded relief, which a lot of the time I tend to because a, a kind of basic stretch doesn't visualize the elevation data that well when you're um, exploring it. Then actually, if we go back to our chart tool and refresh, oh, and it's not going to let me just refresh. Select our lines again. 
you'll notice that one of these now looks very different. And that's because instead of using the actual raw elevation data for that layer, it's now actually visualizing the, the colors on the color ramp, um, which I could understand if I'd kind of exported a, a specific hillshade layer. But I'm actually, you know, the, the raw data is still there. I'm just using the hillshade symbology. So I find that a little bit frustrating. Um, the other thing I find frustrating is quite often if I'm working with this kind of data, I probably want to export it to maybe Excel or another piece of charting software for further analysis, further visualization. And I've discovered that when I've got more than one profile layer, in theory, you can go export as table. Um, call it profile.csv. I've got one saved from previously. And if I now open this up, it opens up in Excel, but it only seems to format properly for the, the first of the profile lines. Um, so I've potentially got some more profile data rolling along over here. But again, that's not particularly helpful. So because of these glitches, I find that the, the built-in profiling tool is really useful for quick exploratory um, you know, visualization of, of profile graphs, identifying where places are changing, things like that. But actually, if, if you want to kind of be able to export and analyze your, your fixed profiles in a bit more detail, then it's not the most effective way to, to do it. So what would I recommend in that case? So the way that I would normally go about this is to produce our profile lines as I have done already here. I might just change the color. Let's go with it. There we go. Make them a little bit more, more visible. And I would then next um, use the generate points along lines tool. So what this allows us to do is create a series of points at fixed intervals along each of these lines. So my input features is my lines layer, output feature class. Um, we can name whatever we like. I might just call it profile points. Uh, point displacement. So we have a number of options here. So if you've got a field within the, the layer, if you want your points at different spacings along each line, we can add that as an attribute and use that. Uh, we can break it down by percentage. So, you know, if our lines are, our profiles are different lengths, but we want 100 points along each of them, um, we can do that. In most cases, you'll probably want your points at a fixed distance along the line. So I'm going to choose the point placement by distance. So let's go, I'll go with two meters. Um, include endpoints so we can choose whether or not to include endpoints. Um, add accumulated distance and sequence fields. So again, depending on what analysis you want to do with this afterwards, how you want to, to visualize it, what you want on your graph axes, these might be useful things to, to include. And we can choose as well whether we want to use planar or geodesic measurements. So I'm only measuring over a short distance. I'm going to stick with planar. Um, click run. And we now have our profile points. And if I open the attribute table, you'll see that it also has the, the FID feature ID from the profile um, lines. So I know which of these points belongs to which profile. Okay, so I've got a series of points. How do I then go about getting this elevation data um, alongside those so I can actually create profiles? And we just have to jump to one more tool, extract multi-values to points. Uh, as it says here, this tool modifies the input data. So what this basically does is it takes out profile points 
uh, feature class that we've just created and it will add new columns containing the values from each of our chosen data sets. So easiest ways to illustrate it. So our inputs, the profile points, and we can choose as many input rasters as we want. So, you know, I've got 2009, 2014, and 2020. We can choose to just measure the value of the cell at that point or to use an interpolation. Um, to get a more specific point value, I'm just going to use the value at the at the points. Um, click run, and if I open the attribute table now, you'll see. So we've now got our ID, um, the actual distance in meters, the sequence, um, and the elevation in each of those years. And now we've got this, we could just do data export table. We don't need to export all the features. Um, so I'm going to save this my GIS folder. So, some Excel warnings for large numbers, um, but here we go. So we now have our profile data um, exported in, in my view, a much more useful format. Now, we will need to do some manipulation. It's got all of the profiles strung out one after another. Um, but we could separate those out manually, um, or we can, if you use other other software like R, for example, um, then it's quite easy to uh, use that to kind of separate these out into the data for individual profiles. But if I select the, the bits I want to plot, Insert scatter graph. Um, let's just do lines. There we go. And we now have our profile data exported and plotted in Excel. Um, and as I said, you know, we can play around with the graph here, get the formatting how we like it. But more importantly, we've now got that raw profile data in a format that we can import and use for, for further analysis in other software, which in my view, um, makes this a, a much more useful way to, to analyze it. So there we go, two different approaches, pros and cons either way, um, and which you want to use is really up to you depending on what you're trying to achieve. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, if it was, please do like and subscribe and keep your eyes peeled for more videos in the near future. Thanks a lot.